Welcome to the Commercial Kitchen Chronicles, the podcast dedicated to the commercial food equipment repair industry. My name is Pat Finley. I'm a lead master certified technician at General Parts Group and a certified special trainer. My goal is to shine a light on what I believe to be one of the most interesting and rewarding industries a field service technician can work in. I love the work I do, and I'm glad you're here listening to this podcast. In this episode, I have Josh Zolan. So, so today I got a very special guest on. Um, I've talked to Josh for a couple of years, probably almost, and we finally got the chance to meet a couple of times and hang out a little bit. So today we have Josh Zolan on. Josh has a pretty cool story. He's a owner of Windy City Equipment. He is the host of Blue is the New White podcast. Author, father, husband. I mean, this guy does all kinds of stuff. I don't know how he finds time for everything. <laughs> well man thanks for having me on the show man i i've been i've been itching for the invite and i'm really uh happy to finally be here i don't want to come off like a fanboy or anything but i really appreciate what you're doing for the industry man and like i know i got a podcast but it's it's uh, i'm casting a really wide net mm-hmm. i really love what you're doing with the with the niche of my background right our mm-hmm. background with the food service equipment man it's it's fantastic i just appreciate uh you letting me uh rap with you a little bit today Hey, no problem at all, man. No problem at all. Um, I love the things you do. You know, I look up to you. I look up to Rich and a lot of the other guys I've met just from social media and the things you guys are doing. And, you know, I was like, man, I got to be a part of something like this. And I'm, I'm glad that I finally, you know, started this up a year ago. It's, it's getting some momentum and it's starting to take off, but it's cool. It, it's been a blast. So thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, I'll, always. So you're out in Arizona, correct? That's right. Yeah, it's almost, uh, I think it's going to hit 100 degrees today. It's almost going to hit 80 today, so I'm pretty excited <laughs> for that. It's, it's been nice. cold. Um, it's been a, it didn't snow a lot here, but it just, it was just cold. Where are you at? In Indiana? Yeah, Indiana. Well, just north of Indianapolis, yeah. So normally oh, okay. we have a pretty good amount of snow. It snowed like twice, and it melted, and it's just been brutally cold. So uh, <laughs> I'm ready for it. So I'm ready for the busy season kick back in, too. So I, yeah. uh, I love the OT. Um, so <laughs> I'll be into that. So you got a pretty cool story. You've done a lot of things in your life. Um, so before you became a service tech, before you owned a company, what did you do for a living? So are you asking me because you know this backstory? I know a little bit. I haven't heard the full story. I know a little bit of what you've done. So, all right. All right. So I'll, I'll start at the beginning. I'll try to go as quick as possible. Just kind of in a nutshell. So, <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> So I come from a, a long line of stunt people, right? My grandfather, um, they actually just completed a documentary about him uh, like last week. And it, it just premiered um, in in uh, Clearview, Florida, uh, just last week. I'm, I'm itching to get my hands on the actual footage. But anyway, he was the one that kind of paved the way for stunt people in the industry. He was really good friends with Chuck Norris, doubled for Charles Bronson. Elvis Presley, I mean, really back in the day, like when cowboys turned to stuntmen, right? And uh, so he passed that on to my mom and all of my uncles. I had three uncles, right? And all of them were in the stunt industry as well. And so my mom had moved from California to uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, because my dad went through the stunt school as well. So my dad was a stuntman also. He lived in Chicago, so they found a place just north of Chicago in Kenosha, uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is where I grew up. And they started a uh, stunt school where they were able to, you know, teach people how to break into the industry. My grandfather had a school in California. They brought one to the Midwest. And that was my life growing up. I was that was the stunt guy. Right. My first car, my license plate sent J stunts. And uh, (laughs) coincidentally, my first girlfriend drove it into a concrete retainment wall. That's another story for another day. (laughs) But um, but that's what I did. And and honestly, uh, that was the family business. That's what I thought I was going to do the rest of my life. So when I turned 18, I uh, turned the wheel west and I headed out to California, broke into the business and uh, landed landed a decent amount of jobs, more than most people do, because I had the right connections, obviously. Uh, But it didn't take long, maybe a year or two for me to realize that's not really what I wanted to do the rest of my life. So. Uh, I kind of had always had an entrepreneurial spirit, you know, I was always the kid that, uh, uh, that would move rocks for the neighbors and, you know, started my own company when I was like 14, you know, just doing weird shit. Sorry. Can I 
Oh, you can say whatever you want, man. Right. You know how us technicians are, dude. All right. If sorry, I'm not around dude. the customer, I got the worst mouth in the world. If I'm around the customer, <laughs> though, I'm the sweetest guy in the world. So. All right, good. I probably should have asked that before the show. But... Oh, you're good. All you're right. Good. So, so anyway, you know, I always had I always had an entrepreneurial spirit, and before I moved out to California, when I was like 17, my dad had moved from Chicago to Arizona because once he got out of the um, film industry, once he stopped being a stuntman. He uh, he was a foreman for a bakery, so he would fix all the big bakery equipment. Right. And uh, that was kind of his background. So he moved out here to Arizona to start a business. And um, it was just him running at the time. He was just a one man shop, you know, trunk slammer, if you, if you will. And uh, so I called him up one day and I said, Dad, I'm done with the stump business and uh, I have no idea what it is you do for a living, but I am assuming there's some kind of opportunity in it. <laughs> and uh so the rest is history. You know, I dropped the stump is I, I moved out to Arizona and he taught me uh, from day one, you know, how to be a technician. Sweet. That's yeah. cool. That's a that's a different angle than I had. Uh, that's for sure. So <laughs> Chicago to Hollywood stump man to Arizona fixing equipment. So that's yeah, cool. it's different. So is that how you got the Windy City Equipment name then? Is it the Chicago reference or? Yeah, it's exactly right. Yep. It's just a, a tribute to uh, where my dad grew up. So that's, that, I always wonder, because I followed you on YouTube for a while, and you know, you used to have the videos and stuff out for the repairs and stuff. I used to follow you on there. Well, I still do on my personal, but I followed you on there. And uh, I was like, oh, they're in Chicago? But and then, <laughs> then I found out you're in Arizona. I was like, Wendy, this makes no sense. But now yeah. it makes complete sense. So <laughs> that's cool. Hell? That's yeah. cool. We actually, funny story, we had to rebrand to WCE instead of uh, Windy City Equipment because I kept getting calls from Chicago. People wanted me to come out and fix their equipment. I was like, dude, you don't want to pay that service fee. I mean, I'll yeah. come out there, but you're not going to like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go anywhere for the right fee. That's right. <laughs> That's cool. So how long did you work with your dad? So he's still part of the business today. And so I've been working with him now for, well, let's see, that was uh, 2008, I think I came out here. So, you know, we're going on 15 years, 15 nice. years now. You know, the first, uh, first 10 years, uh, probably the first seven years, I was just a full-fledged technician out in the field, you know, fixing equipment. You know, it wasn't until year eight, nine, and 10, you know, I started to kind of get a bigger understanding of the back-end operations, you know, with the P&Ls and the dispatch and the quoting and the parts and all this. And, and so, you know, um, through that, you know, I was working closely with him, but as we started bringing more people on and into the business, I started to kind of separate from being a technician a little bit and working side by side with him to more office, you know, style work, which if I'm being honest, I miss being out there in the field sometimes, man. Yeah. I know guys that, you know, they want to work with somebody for five or six years and get the knowledge base and the, you know, get comfortable doing the industry and go out on their own. I always tell them, I said, that's fine. I said, you know, you can fix anything in the world, but if you don't know how to run a business, you're going to be right back working for somebody in a year. Um, so I always encourage people, if you want to start your own business, you know, you're working for someone for a while, that's fine. But make sure you're taking business classes. Make sure you're trying to learn from people, it, you know, that own business. It doesn't have to be our industry, but, you know, it could be another service industry. Make sure you talk to them and just work your way through it. I mean, like I said, you can fix anything in the world and not run a business. So <laughs> that's absolutely right. So yeah. that's cool. That's cool. So how big are you guys now? You're in a few different states, correct? Yeah, so right now we have four branches in three states. Uh, we've got Phoenix, Tucson, Albuquerque, and Houston, Texas. And uh, yeah, that's it's been a, a bit of a ride, right? You know, it's uh, from me and my dad working out of his garage to, um, you know, honestly, what really propelled us was when we decided to start uh, an HVAC and refrigeration division. We had such a great customer base with the niche uh, trade mm -hmm. that we were in. And they were always asking us to open up a refrigeration, a, you know, HVAC and refrigeration side. And we just, you know, stay in your lane kind of thing. My dad actually went to refrigeration school at one point, but he'll be the first to tell you that he sucks at it. And so <laughs> we just never did it. And then we we found the right people, as the story so often goes, right? You bring on the right people, bring on the people smarter than you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found them to, to open up, you know, the HVAC and refrigeration side and then that's when we really started to put the pedal to the metal. That's about the time that I became CEO as well. And, um, and that we really kind of opened up the throttle and, and just kind of went right. We landed on the Inc 5,000 list of fastest growing companies in America three times. 
nice. uh, which was wild. Um, but yeah, man, it's it, it just it everything kind of fell into place. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't realize you guys started off as a hot side only and then had it in. Um, I mean, yeah. that makes sense. Uh, um, you know, I started as hot side only first, and then I got bored and I got ADHD, so I I gotta <laughs> be all over the place. And I went to do refrigeration, and I ended up leaving to go do refrigeration. Um, and now I just kind of do everything. I do installs. I do hot side, cold side, uh, dish machines. If it's in there, I'm going to work on it. I mean, that's just how I am. And yeah. uh, you, you can really see the value, especially if you can do everything well. It's hard to do everything well. That's what I've realized. You know, there's other guys I work with where I know that they can do both, but they can't do both well. They're either good at one yeah. or good at the other. But you find a guy that can do both well and you better hold on to that guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, we've talked about this before, Pat. It's like, you know, the mindset these days is, you know, people, they do. They they want to, they, they've got their niche. They've got their skill, right? And and it seems like some people just, for whatever reason, they don't want to branch out with that, right? And, you know, the mentality once was, hey, yeah, if I'm here in a kitchen, you know, and, and, and this piece of equipment is broken, I'm going to fix it. Whether that's my background or not, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to try, you know. Oh, yeah. But, Dude, I'll fix water lines coming out of the wall. I'll fix <laughs> drain lines on sinks. I mean, if it's in a kitchen, dude, I don't care. If, as long as it's yeah. not in the wall, you know, because our insurance purposes, if it's outside the wall, we can do it. Yeah. Dude, if it's there, hey, can you do this? Can you do this? Yeah, yeah, I can do it. Let's go. Yeah, let's make oh, it happen. absolutely. Um, get that, take care of that customer mentality is what it comes down to. I mean, a lot of guys just see it as a job, like, you know, and they don't see the other side of it. You've got to look forward than it look further than it just being a job um you're impacting people whether you know it or not i mean it's, it's crazy to think uh, i had a guy on last week and he asked me you know what's your impact and i didn't really know what to think and i thought it was just the short term he goes no he said you gotta think about the long term you gotta think that you're affecting not just the person working there you're affecting their family you're affecting everyone coming in to eat in that restaurant with their family and it's just like the downstream effect of what we really do is kind of crazy to think about Here's another angle on that too. If you haven't heard this before, Pat, who else do you impact in in that position? And this is this is interesting. Somebody asked me this question, and I answered it. You know, kind of the same way that you just described it. Like, you know, I'm impacting the uh, uh, the customer. I'm impacting the family. I'm impacting you know their customers, mm -hmm. right? But the person that you impact the most in the position that you're in is actually your direct supervisor, right? Mm -hmm. So. When you when you talk about culture, because we we talk all the time about the culture mm -hmm. in the industry, right? I think that that's an important angle to see, mm -hmm. you know, especially when you're talking about being a full fledged technician, like mm -hmm. what all you're affecting, like on a personal level, man. Like it's important to understand that every time you do something wrong, every time you complain, every time you 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 throw your arms up, every time you make a phone call, you know, and you know what type of phone calls I'm talking about. I'm not yeah. talking about the respectful ones, you know, I'm yeah. talking about the one that you got on, on, uh, on your, on your vacation day. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Those ones The people don't realize how much you're affecting the other person that's trying to help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just important. Yeah. yeah. I get that too. I mean, I, I get guilty of, you know, just sometimes I don't know when to say no, I take on things I really shouldn't take on. And then I let that affect my mood and it affects how I talk and handle other people. And, yeah. yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, I'm trying to do better. I mean, I get through spurts where it's I'm good, sometimes I'm bad. And it's just, you know, you think about it, especially if you got a, a newer tech with you or a younger guy riding with you, you gotta you can't do those things. You gotta, you know, be respectful because I mean that guy's watching you, so he sees you get away with that. He doesn't know, you know, what you've done or the things you do do. He just sees you acting out or lashing out or being upset, and he thinks, Oh, that's an acceptable thing to do. And I mean, that, I mean, that, that's not cool. I mean, I'm guilty of it. So, I mean, I'm not beating nobody up. I mean, I'm not perfect. Um, I strive to be better every day. Um, but if I do mess up, I'm going to own it. I'm going to own it. I'm not going to try to blame anybody else. Um, you know, I'm my own, my own person. No one forces me to do anything and I'll take care of what I do though. <laughs> Yeah. And that's good mindset. You know, I mean, awareness is key, right? Just being aware of that simple fact is probably more than 90% of people, you know, mm -hmm. can, can, can say that they do, you know, self-awareness is, uh, seems very rare these days. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, that is the, the, the fundamental, that's the baseline, 
for making any and all change and actually seeing situations for what they are and and like to your point personal development and and peer development even more so right mm-hmm. cool cool so how many uh, guys do you have working for you currently Oh gosh. Uh, technicians. Don't worry about office, just technicians. <laughs> so technicians, I think we've got 40. Wow. Dang. That's pretty impressive, man. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. 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 It's uh, it's definitely something, you know. <laughs> yeah, I always see you traveling a little bit, you know, you go into Houston for a meeting or some of your other branches. That's cool. You always go in and you know, for the meetings with the techs and stuff, you're there to talk to them. And that, that that's a that's a huge impact, I think, on those guys because you know, you're you're in uh, where it's Phoenix is that where you're at or Tucson or yep, Phoenix. Phoenix. So you're taking your time to go to Houston to be in that meeting, to show face, to talk to those guys. You know, I've worked for guys that I didn't even know what they look like. I mean, yeah. And, but for you to come in for those meetings and to be a face there and talk to them, explain to those guys and talk to the managers that, I mean, that's a huge impact on those guys. So that's a, that's a pretty cool thing you do there. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. And, and, you know, we can always do better. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I could probably show face a little bit more. We do have, so this this year is our 20th year in business, right? I came on 15 years ago. My dad had it five years before that. So we're 20 years in business now. And we've got uh, parties at every single branch that we're going Sweet. to. Well. Yeah. So I'm making sure that like uh, this weekend, this Saturday is Phoenix. It's going to be the biggest one. Then next weekend where I'm in Tucson, spending time with those guys. And then uh, second week in May, I go out to Houston those guys, the the guys we have in Albuquerque are coming to meet us in the in the Phoenix one. So, you know, it's it's hard, but to your point, it's really important and and really mm-hmm. impactful. Uh, I think to just to let everybody know that listen, I, you know, I don't want to be one of those companies that mm-hmm. uh, you know it feels like they put a number on your forehead and call it a day. You know, this is I tell everybody we're trying to do the hard thing, right? We're trying mm-hmm. to scale with the uh, pr- uh, processes and structure of a corporate company, but also the values and the characteristics of a family owned business. There's a yeah. reason that those businesses don't grow in scale. There's a mm-hmm. reason that they get to a point and either sell or just go completely corporate. Mm-hmm. Right? And I never want to be that company. I want to walk that line uh, as long and as far as I possibly can. So my background in the industry, I've always worked for big companies. I worked for, um, GCS just became smart care. Um, right. that's where I started at. And then I went to a couple, they were bigger companies, they were bigger shops. They did HVAC, but they were trying to do kitchen stuff locally. So I've, I've always worked for the, the big places, you know, hundred plus guys, you know, you're just a number in the, in the thing. Um, so I don't have that experience, you know, working for a family owned business. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. Uh, guys always ask me like what would you rather do family owned or a corporate i was like well i was like i can't really honestly say that because i've never been in that family owned situation i said but you know a lot of guys complain about the corporate side of it and i was like i I can't complain about that because i'm pretty well taken care of where i'm at now i said i wasn't always that way you know i've done a lot for general parsky where i am you know i came in needing a job and i came in and i just i had that mindset i was never going to refuse anything so if they need someone to do a night job, it was always me. If someone needed to cover on call, it was me, you know, and then it became, I always wanted to learn. I wanted to learn new stuff. So anytime a new piece of equipment came out, Hey, can I go to training on that? Can I go to rationale? Can I go to this? Can I go to that? It's just that always that thirst and hunger is just, it's really paid off for me. But I mean, it, it, I guess I'm just lucky that, you know, someone seen it and I was always just the guy that was made sure I was in front of everybody's face all the time though. So yeah, and that's a really good point too that you bring up because there's there's two sides to every coin. Yep. Right. And and you know, with the with the bigger companies like that, the corporate companies, you know, sometimes the structure can get in the way of what you want to do. But at the end mm-hmm. of the day, it's in place so that the entire company thrives. Yep. Right? And and you've got that that security that comes with it too. Mm-hmm. It's a big company, you know, they're not going anywhere, family owned. It's like, you know, sometimes it depending on how big they are, it, it can be a question. You know, and mm-hmm. so it's a trade off. Right. Mm-hmm. And you've got to figure out what uh, what you value individually. And mm-hmm. that's going to drive, you know, where you where you best fit the culture. Yep. Yep. I'm not against nothing, man. I mean, like I said, I, I don't have the experience of the small companies and I don't knock it. I mean, just I've never been there. So I don't know right. what the benefits of it are. Um, 
you know, to each his own. I mean, I respect the small guys. I respect the big guys. There's a place in the market for everybody, I feel. Um, and I think, you know, there's more than enough work to go around for everybody. I mean, you know, there for a while we were understaffed. We were telling customers we were three weeks out, man. Yeah. Unless you were our top tier customer, you weren't getting service within a week. You know, our top five to ten percent, we were doing same day, next day, just to make sure we kept that relationship and everyone else was just getting told, yeah. you know, three weeks out. Once you proved overtime, some people would approve overtime, some people would decline. It was crazy yeah. there for a while. And we're same story. Our- All over the place, man. Same, same shit. We're starting to get our numbers back up. We're starting to get some guys in. Um, my son's been with us about seven months. We've got a um, he had no experience, came right out of high school, goofed off for a year, and then came to work for us. Um, he's catching on pretty good. He's learning. He's real thirsty, real hungry for knowledge. So uh, I think he's going to be a good fit. And then we've hired a um, a guy that used to do it, worked for a school system, came back. So he's, he's going to be all right. He's just got to polish some things. I mean, just get some bad habits. You know how it is. You get a guy of experience, and sometimes you got bad habits you got to deal with, and sometimes they, you know, you don't have it. It's just luck yeah. of the draw. Um, so, you know, it's just, it just business. I mean, it, everyone's got a bad habit or something. So, But we're oh, trying to get that number back up, and um, I'm looking forward to see what's going to be next for my market. Um, I'm trying to do a job change. I don't really want to say job change. I want to take on some additional responsibilities outside of being in the field. So I'm trying to work that up and see what happens with that. But uh, I'm, I don't see myself completely coming out of the field for a while. I mean, I just want to be more involved with some of the marketing stuff and some of the social media stuff and then some of the training stuff I want to try to take over, um, like some tablet training and some other stuff. I just, I think I could have a different different view to bring to that instead of having someone that doesn't use a tablet every day teach it. You know, I use our program every day and I know all the secrets, the shortcuts. You know, I've had guys call me. I've had other companies we've acquired that had questions before they started running and call me and I'd walk them through stuff and show them how to do stuff. This is like, why don't I just do this? You know what I mean? Yeah. And that free up the person that does it now to do some other things and I could just do it. You know, I don't know. It's just some of the things I want to try to do. I want to be more than just a tech. I've always been told that I could be more than just a tech. So now I'm just trying to figure that route out and figure out what avenue I'm going to go. <laughs> That's awesome though. I mean, cause I mean, that mindset, I got to say it's, it's rare, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, there's, there's people, there's the people that don't really know what they want. There's the people mm-hmm. that, uh, that say they want all that, but then they put, don't put in the effort to actually mm-hmm. do it. Right. We see that's the real epidemic these days, man. I, I see that all the time, you know, but then there's, there's people like you who, who put your money where your mouth is. Right. And you're actually mm-hmm. taking tangible steps to be able to contribute in that capacity, man. That is, that's incredibly valuable, both for yourself personally and for mm-hmm. the organization that you're with. That's hats off to you, my friend. Yeah. Just like everyone's like, you want more stuff to do? I'm like, well, I was like, you know, it, it's not going to be a whole lot. I think it, if I, if I spend eight hours or 10 hours a week on it, it'd be probably more than I expected to spend on it. So we'll see what the, happens. And that's the deal, right? That's what kids out there need to understand today is that the deal is you take on more and you push yourself mm-hmm. and then you create that opportunity, right? That uh, opportunity yeah. won't be there first. And then mm-hmm. you say, okay, now I'll do more. It's just not how it works, man. Yeah, dude, we had a guy, younger guy. He was in mid twenties, went to a local community college for HVAC. He came to work for us. He was catching on. He wasn't doing bad. I mean, just a young guy, you know. And uh, he worked here about six months, went on call. And the first week he had like 52 hours. I'm like, I do that sometimes on Thursday, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and um, the second time we went on call, it was like 56 hours. And he came in Monday, turned it in his two weeks notice and quit. He's like, oh, I don't want to be on call. I'm like, you went to school for HVAC. You're going to be on call for <laughs> anywhere you work, dude. I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I was not in school. Come on, man. Yeah, when he was like, he's like, well, I'd be like five o'clock and I still have a call on my board, you know, and I'd have to go do it. I'm like, no. I was like, you don't have to do that. It's like, unless you're on call and it's overtime call, it's a different story. I said, but she puts that on there. She hopes you run it because I run it just because that's how I am. But I said, you don't have to run that call. It's five o'clock. You're not on call, man. Yeah. He's like, well, no one explained it to me. I was like, well, did you ask? Well, nah. no. I was like, there it is. They yeah. want you to explain everything to them and they don't want, they don't want to ask the questions. I'm like, Man, I'm not going to get mad at you for asking me any question regarding anything. I was like, I'd rather you ask the question and get an answer you don't like, and then we can discuss it or we can take it to someone else who can maybe help you with it than just expect us to tell you and inform you. I mean, there's so much stuff that we do every day that I I, I, I just know it, but yeah. you know, I'm guilty about not probably explaining a lot of stuff through it, but I mean – just because there's a call on your board at five o'clock doesn't mean you got to run it. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And you know what? Honestly, people like that, if they if they have a problem 
with the sheer, uh, if they can't even ask the question because whatever, they're afraid of the confrontation or they're afraid of the answer or whatever, this ain't the industry for them. Mm-hmm. You, you got to be able to ask the dumb questions, you know, right. and I say I put dumb in quotes, but uh, you know, you got to be able to ask those, those questions because otherwise how are you going to learn? Like you can't just expect people to tell you everything you need to know. You got to ask, man, take that responsibility. Yeah. I mean, I was always, I was always the guy that's going to ask questions, you know, like I said, you know, I may have thought they were dumb or whatever, but I'm, I was always going to ask them regardless. I mean, I'd rather feel dumb and get a dumb answer than, to never ask a simple question and not have any answer at all and just struggle. Yep. So, Absolutely. I mean, there, there's a place in this industry for guys that want to uh, do more and excel and learn more. And then there's a place for the guys that just kind of skate by and settle. Um, unfortunately, it seems like there's a lot more guys that are just wanting to skate by and settle right now. And it's, it's sad to see. I mean, you see a lot of guys that have potential and they just, they're just happy with what they have. And, I don't know. I guess I'm just wired differently where I get this never se- never settled mentality or never happy mentality what I have. I always want more. I mean, yeah. it's not really a greed thing. It's like I don't want more possessions. I just want more responsibilities or more challenge in my life when it comes to work and stuff like that. So, Well, it's it's you and I are cut from the same cloth, Pat. It's you know what it is. It's a uh, it's a commitment to growth. Right. It's an obsession with growing personally. And that's why you take on so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much stuff that you know probably clouds you a little bit and as it does me right like i'll i'll take on as much as i possibly can until i get to a point where i'm like oops (laughs) yeah oops you know but it's in the spirit of wanting more of wanting to Mm -hmm. push myself to be better and to your point not everybody is built that way and that's Mm -hmm. all right listen if some people are content with you know what they have and where they are and what they know then Hey, all the power to them mm-hmm. as long as they can find a spot that fits. Right? Yeah. Don't try to put a, a square peg in a round hole, you know, or don't try to, to, if you know you're a square peg, don't try to force yourself into a round hole. Know what you are, have that self awareness, and then contribute in the capacity that you know that you can, but communicate that. Yeah. Yeah. I had someone told me, like, you have to stop expecting you out of everybody else. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, wow, that's, 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 that's the truth. It's pretty deep. I mean, it's hundred percent. Well, <laughs> you know, I just think, well, I'd do that. Why don't you do that? And it's just like, well, not everybody's Pat, not everybody's Josh. So it's just, it's a weird dynamic, I guess, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, man. I've had to use that with a couple of guys here too. Like, <laughs> like, like, Hey, they're not going to be you. They're never going to be you. Just be okay with that. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I'm bad about is like guys like that. I'll, and I, I'm, I'm bad. Like I'll, I'll see a mistake they make and then I'll look for that mistake every single time. And then I'm like, you're doing this, you're doing this. And I'm like, why am I doing this to them? Why am I doing this to myself? I got to quit doing stuff like that. And that's what I'm bad about. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) I hear you, man. I'm right there with you. (laughs) So, all right. We've talked about your locations, your texts. So you, well, we're talking about overcommitting a few couple minutes ago, you know, doing too much. So, um, I last year I work a bunch of hours. I I teach Fry Master and Garland for us. I teach refrigeration for Safesa. I um, I started a podcast and all the social media with it, which I never realized was going to be a full time job in itself. I thought oh, I'll just start a podcast and you know I'll post about here or there. Holy cow, man! The associated social media with it, it's a full time uh, job in itself. Yeah, I'm like every day. I'm like if I don't have content out, I'm like look at my engagement. I'm like, that sucks. I'm like, no, stop looking at it. So, <laughs> and I was on some committees for Cefesa. So I was on the uh, training committee and I jumped on um, a subcommittee too. And it just, you know, I went to Cefesa and I was talking to Dan and I was like, I, I just don't have time. I can't think, I can't breathe. I can't do anything, you know, to myself without thinking about something else. And Dan's like, he's like, I don't know how you do this. He's like, but he's like, you're going to have to stop something. And I was like, well, I don't want to stop anything. I feel like I can put a, I, I'm bringing value to everything I'm in. And he's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, but once you're too stressed out or too worked out, your values diminish at that point. So I ended up walking away from the training stuff for Safesa for the uh, committees. Um, and I told him I'll probably be back, you know, once I get everything figured out and squared away and get everything, you know, rolling the way it should be and get smoothed out. So, um, I do miss it. Um, I think that 
So FESA would do well if they had technicians in all the committees, I think. Um, it's a good idea. I'd like to see a technician involved in every aspect of it. You know, all the committees, at least being there to have a technician's point of view. Um, it seems like, you know, there's like a lot of owners and managers in there. Um, but the technicians, you know, is the heart of the industry. And it's just like, I, I like being in there because I had to say, and I could say, well, this is what I see from my side of it. It was pretty cool. So um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't know where I was going with it. It's just, it was, it was a cool experience and I can't wait to get back involved in some things with Cefesa. So, yeah, no, that makes sense. And like we were on the topic of over committing, right. And, and so, you know, you had uh, stretched yourself. It sounds like pretty thin between mm -hmm. all the stuff that, uh, that you've done. I, I'm right there with you, man. I sit on two committees uh, for Cefesa and the board. I sit on two committees now for RIFMA, which I, kind of taking a, a page out of your handbook i had to step down from one committee because i just didn't have time mm -hmm. right and i mean i host three podcasts now between uh, my own and safesa's and behind the burner you know with the repairs guys yeah i'll try to get in on that one <laughs> that's, that's a cool one man we're having a lot of fun with that one yeah. um yeah plus on top of windy city plus i've got blue is the new white you know that's not just a book and a podcast it's a brand yeah you know and so that's a business in itself, and and not, not, not a lot of people know this, but I also have a uh, real estate holding company, you know that uh, uh, that I own as well. So, you know, I I get it, and and to your point, yes, you know, at some point that was really good advice that Dan gave you. You've got to choose, mm -hmm. right? Because you know, instead of doing four things at one hundred percent capacity, you're doing twelve things at fifty percent, and then what's your value really then? Mm hmm. Yeah, it, I was just starting to suffer everywhere. I was in a bad mood. I was just, I couldn't get enough sleep. I was always stressed out. I was always, it just, I mean, it sucked. I just walk away from the training committee. Um, I enjoyed that a lot. But I mean, I just, I had to choose the things that I needed to get going, you know. And um, like I said, this podcast, it, I wouldn't think it'd take the effort it does, but it does take a little effort. I'm getting it kind of, kind of honed in a little bit. Um, the ones that take a little bit of time are like this one where I'm not live. So I'll go back and I'll edit it out and stuff and clean it up a little bit. But like the ones I'm live doing live stream, unless something gets totally off the rails or someone says something completely inappropriate, I leave up. Yeah. And then I just steal the audio from that and put it up. So it's not too bad. Um, what do you, what do you got to clean up from something like this? If you don't mind me asking. Nothing. I made this like at the beginning where it was a little slow. Um, that'd be about it. I mean, I, oh, okay. when I do stuff like this, I give the person at the end, I'm like, Hey, is there anything you want me to take out? You know, if, you know, because sometimes I'm stop. guilty of it. Stop doing stop. that, man. Stop, stop doing this. Let it roll. I treat every single podcast. I've done 147 of my own podcast episodes now. I treat every single one of them like it's live. I've made <laughs> a couple of edits in some of them when, yeah. when people reached out to me without my prompting them saying, hey, I realized I said this. Can you just go back and take it out? I'm like, yeah, fine. That You know, that's not a big deal. Okay. But, man, the second you offer it, you make people think. You make people think like, hmm. All right, maybe maybe I did say something I uh, that could be construed as no nah, man, you just you push that shit out. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> That's good advice, man. I appreciate that. I just like yeah. uh, I I just give a few people I give them people the opportunity, like for some, like it's just a manufacturer. I've had like a, a Brendan on from Well Built and I was like, Hey, I was like, anything you want me to take out? He's like, No, just let it go and okay, I'll just put it out. I mean, it is what it is. So um I'll add in like a little intro video. Um, I've got feedback. People are like, oh, we don't like the intro videos. You know, let's get straight to it. And like, I don't know what to do, man. You can't please everybody. <laughs> You'll never please everybody. No. Nope. <laughs> no. So that's cool. So you mentioned uh, Behind the Burners. That's a new one. Yeah. Yeah. So that one I'm hosting with uh, Ray Bartolomucci, the CEO of Repairs, um, which is cool. We're talking to uh, people in the uh, uh, in our industry in particular you know, the food service uh, repair industry, but uh, hope, like trying to tie in the uh, people in the technology space mm -hmm. as well. Because, yes. you know, as you know, this industry has been a little bit behind uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to technology via software and AI and all this kind of stuff. We're kind of in a position where we're playing catch up. And I feel like now, you know, we're kind of starting to catch up with the rest, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, we see some really intuitive stuff out there now between, you know, XOI and repairs and, um, what's the other one? A quant, right? And and mm -hmm. interplay and all of these cool companies that are doing awesome things with virtual reality and artificial intelligence and and simulations. It's it's really neat. So with that podcast, we're trying to um, 
uh, really get a full uh, view of, of mm -hmm. you know, how technology is impacting this uh, sector and then trying to give some tangible advice as to how people can implement that technology into their operation. That's cool. It's cool. Yeah. The repair guys are great, man. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they're always a class act, man. And they're, yeah. they're fun to be around full of energy, man. And I love those guys, man. They're, they're good dudes. <laughs> yeah. Um, he mentioned to me, me a couple <laughs> months. Yeah. He mentioned to me a couple months ago about you guys starting to behind the burner thing. I was like, Hey, if you ever need somebody, let me know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I like their, uh, their aspect. Dude, I love their software, man. Cause I, yeah. I, I sat down yeah. with them at Cefesa and they're like, Hey, you want to play with this? I was like, I was like, you do know I work for, right? And what we do is like, yeah. I was like, no, we, I just want you to see it. And I was like, I played with it. And I was like, this is actually pretty, pretty user friendly. It's pretty tech friendly. I was like, this thing's pretty cool, man. I was like, yeah. I like what you guys have done with it. And, you know, so. Yeah, it's really good stuff. I'm, I'm actually, I'm super excited. I see the advancements. So I'm an, I'm an advisor for them and I'm also mm -hmm. an investor in the uh in the product because i i just i believe not some i mean in the product absolutely but in those in those guys that you mentioned mm -hmm. i mean the the passion that they have for for what they do is just it's unmatched and the advancements that they're making to that software every single day i'm just biding my time until you know it's big enough that i can i can start using them <laughs> yeah so their story is cool too, man. Like when he posts on a Saturday night, he's in the family restaurant working, and I'm like, "This is this is it right here." He, he's got his yeah. thing during the week and on the weekend. If he needs his dad needs help or they need help at the restaurant, he's there. He's there helping out, getting dirty. I'm like, "This is cool." Respect the hustle, man. Dude, always respect the hustle. So blue is the new white. You, you've had several of my friends on there. I finally <laughs> got the chance to come on there. It was really cool. I appreciate yeah. it, man. Um, I like what you're doing. I mean, you're just all the trades, all the trades get a shot at it. And that's what I try to do. I mean, I try to focus on the kitchen side of it, but I, I'm, I'm going to have plumbers on. I'm going to have electricians on. I've had HVAC yeah. guys on. I mean, it's all part of the kitchen equipment, you know, trade is it's, it's, we're really a jack of all. I mean, I do yeah. plumbing, I do electrical, I do HVAC, I do refrigeration, I do dish machines. I mean, there's so much in the kitchen that I just want to try to get out there, but you know, there's other trades that are still involved in it. And I just try to show everybody. Yeah, no, and that's a great and that's a great way to go about it, right? Just the fact that you're positioning yourself in this niche and then mm -hmm. you're branching out from there is hugely valuable, right? Because you're you're absolutely right. You know, to be a food service equipment technician, you've got to know a little bit of all these different trades. I mean, shit, I remember, you know, even when I I, I didn't do any HVAC or refrigeration. I was just hot side, but I still had to know how to solder lines, you know, to mm -hmm. or steam tables and stuff like that. Put a booster I, heater in or something. Put yeah. a booster, exactly. Put in a booster heater, wire in an exhaust fan. I mean, you know, this is, yeah, you got to know everything. And so, and, and you know, as well as I do, man, these industries, they're, they're the heroes of society, right? Oh, they, yeah. they're the ones who build civilization and nobody freaking knows about, you know, what, what this all entails. And, and, you know, people like you, people like me, when I was in the field, people like my technicians, people, you know, you don't, I mean, we don't get respect. Mm. Right. And no. I only get respect now because I wrote a freaking book. Okay. <laughs> you know? And it was, I did a, I used the service to do that too, by the way. But, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's, it, it's just this perception, which, I mean, you've, been on my show you've you've heard you know the other guests that i've had it's that's all what it's about is is how do we get people to understand the value the pride the fulfillment the honor the reverence in mm -hmm. these types of jobs man i just think that the schools have done such a bad job telling everybody since like the 90s you have to go to college to be something and that's that's never farther from the truth than right now i mean you're still going to need college. College is better if you're engineers, your doctors, your lawyers. There's still always going to be for colleges, but the need for guys like us right now is so damn high. Oh yeah, you can pretty much name your price right now. I mean, like what they're paying guys that have zero experience coming in this industry is like twice what I made 17 years ago when I came in and I had seven years of electrical background behind me. And I'm like, <laughs> you're paying this guy how much? I'm like I, I didn't make that when I started here 12 years ago. I was like, what the hell, guys? It's amazing, isn't it? And people don't know. Like, I, I'm speaking at uh, Field Service USA in a few weeks. Yep, yep. And my session is uh, swinging the pendulum, right? And mm -hmm. how to revive uh, uh, this profession in, in the growing industry. And it it's just people don't realize that, number one, 
the technicians are leaving this industry at a rate of five to one. So every mm-hmm. time five people leave, one person comes in. Yep. They think that in the next 10 years, it's estimated that we'll have a third of the workforce that we have right now. So That's what crazy. the hell is this industry going to look like with a third of the workforce? It's only getting more advanced. We've all seen the robots are coming. I mean, that's just beginning. Just the fry robots the beginning. It's going to come more. I mean, we've heard stories about Flippy. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there. That's Yeah, it's going to be coming. And you're not going to get a robot guy to come into a kitchen to work on it. Nope. So now's the opportunity for me, for your guys to step up. Like, hey, I want to learn robotics. I want to learn this. I want to be able to fix this. So when this thing breaks, I'm already there. I can fix this or I know what to do. And that's where guys are going to shine, man, is being able to fix the robots, being able to fix anything. I mean, I want if, – if I can walk into a restaurant and be there 10, 12 hours and fix five, six things at one one location, that's a great day, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, and that's a value asset to your customer too. They're not paying multiple trips. They're not paying multiple travel charges there. I mean, it, it's only, it's only going to get even crazier. I mean, if I could get guys that want to learn and want to advance – and that's the key thing. I mean, I've said it several times. You gotta want to do more, and yeah. you're you're gonna be invaluable to this industry, any industry, really. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Hundred percent. Sweet. Sweet. So we touched that you are on a Cefesa board. So how's that? We won't get too crazy because I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want Heather calling me. So <laughs> that's right. Don't worry. Believe me. She called me before she called you. If she saw this episode and somebody said something she didn't like. <laughs> so, <laughs> Heather's my buddy, but she's just she's looking out for Cefesa. I get it, man. Oh, yeah. I get and, that's, it. and that's her job. And she does a wonderful. wonderful oh, yeah, she does. Job. That she does, man. And and here's what I'll say is, you know, I didn't I had no intention of running for the board. You know, I, I really I really didn't. And um Truth be told, I haven't been as involved in Cefesa over the last few years as I, I probably could have or should have, you know, and um, it was only because I received an abundance of phone calls, <laughs> you know, telling me that, hey, listen, there's this board spot, you know, that we really think that you should be on a board. And one person called me who who sits on the board and they they said, listen, you know, we really think that you should do this. And I told them, I said, listen you understand, you know, kind of where I stand. And they, Mm -hmm. they told me straight out, they said, that's exactly why we need you on the board. Yep. And I, you know, that was a really powerful statement to me because it showed me that, you know, they're committed. So Mm -hmm. that's committed to making this industry better. You know, if they're, especially if they're pursuing somebody like me, who's got a big freaking mouth, you know, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm all over social media and, you know, in, in this industry and I don't know that that resonated. So I have to say since running, which it, it went to an election, a vote mm-hmm. and, and I won somehow. Hey, I was, was there. I seen it. I didn't have a vote, but I was there. <laughs> it was also amazing. I didn't, I wasn't convinced I was actually going to win that. But <laughs> um, since I've been sitting on the board, it has been a really great experience. Um, I gotta say, you know, any reputation that Cefesa had in the past, um, whether that was, you know, just that they're not doing enough to support the industry or that they're a good old boys club. And listen, I'm just being real. Right? Oh, I said are, the same thing. I'm not going to lie. I've called it a good are, old boys club. dude. These are I, narratives. They've existed. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you that something feels different now. Mm-hmm. And that's really exciting to be a part of. I love and, seeing the younger guys, you, Nick. I love it. I love the yeah. energy you guys are bringing to it. Yeah. Um, I, I see people's posts about board meetings and sitting in meetings on the phone and stuff. I'm like, I always put goals and everyone's like, why? I'm like, because I want to be a technician on that board. I want to, you know, there's owners, there's managers, there's, you know, all kinds of people on that board. I said, I want to be a technician on that board with the background I have and I want to be speaking up for all the technicians out here that are grinding away. And it's like, that's what I want to see. I like, I, I want that eventually. Now, unfortunately who I work for, uh, I think we're limited on board spots. So uh, it's going to be a rough one for me to obtain. So, uh. <laughs> but you know what? I mean, that you're absolutely right though. I mean, just, mm-hmm. just the fact that you have that thought process is in, incredible valuable for the entire mm-hmm. industry, you know? And, and so, yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. And I'm, I'm really, listen, the one thing that I said, cause I, I struggled with this decision. I told you that it, the only way that this would make sense for me, somebody like me is if I feel like I can make a difference. Mm-hmm. 
I feel like I can sit on that board, that board and my voice will be heard, you know, then mm -hmm. let's do it. Let's go. Yep. I'm all in. Right. And every, anything I do, I'm all in. Yep. And, uh, and I got to say to this point, it's, it's been exactly that. And, uh, and it's exciting, man, because this industry deserves to be on a pedestal. You know how I feel. Oh yeah, we got some stuff in the works. I'm not gonna talk about it now because I don't want no one to snipe our idea. But yeah, that's good. There's that's some good. pretty cool stuff coming up in the future <laughs> that I'm lucky to be a part of, and Josh is a part of, and Svest is gonna be a part of it. So there's some pretty cool stuff coming up. So hell yeah, man, let's go. Yeah, but uh, I'll be on that board one day. I don't know if I'll be 60 years old, but I'll be on that board one day. <laughs> You've got my vote, my friend. Oh, uh, that's funny. So. I won't keep you much longer. Um, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you telling the story about being a stuntman and, you know, working for your dad and growing what you guys are growing. Um, you know, being a part of repairs, those guys over there absolutely killing it. Um, I love those guys, man. Just the enthusiasm they have, dude. If you're near them and they know you're a tech, you're trying out their software, man. They want yeah. your feedback and input. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah. And it's great though. I mean, I was like, okay, what is this? And it, it, they really have a great product. So I can't wait to see what they do next. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. It should be exciting. I don't know what it's going to look like, but it's going to change the it's going to change the landscape for sure. Sweet, sweet. So, where can everybody find you? Um, social media, website, your book, podcast. You can throw it all out here, and of yeah. course, I'll link it all in the description once this does release. I appreciate that. So, I mean, I'm all over social media at uh, Josh Zolan everywhere. Uh, let's see. You could find me at, uh, I think the, the blues, the new white website is down right now. I'm having some issues with the host. So, um, don't go to that website, but, uh, actually Pat, you were the first one that told me that there was some malware stuff that was happening with that site. Oh yeah. The link, the, the link to the sign up. Yeah. I was like, this is kind of weird. It oh yeah. And then I got, I got deeper into it. And then like now the whole site is completely taken offline. I'm so anyway, I won't get into that, but, uh, or you can find me at, uh, uh, WCE commercial.com. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, just Google me. I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Well, I won't take no more of your time. You know what? I will say one thing. I love the fact that when you record, you want to do it before you get off work. That way, when you go home, you're with your kids, your wife, your family. And I applaud you for that, man. I really do. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. You know, we talk about being uh, uh, busy and, and biting off more than we can chew. And there's one thing that I can't and won't waver on. And that's, uh, understanding what really makes me wealthy and what really makes me successful. And it is my family. Sweet. Well, you guys heard it here. Look for Josh everywhere you can find him. Thanks guys. <laughs> All right. Thanks Pat. If you guys would please consider subscribing, rating and reviewing the podcast. It really helps us grow and helps us know which direction to move in. Also, if you have any suggestions for guests, please email me at commercial kitchen chronicles at gmail.com. Or if you want to be a guest, email me. Love to have you guys on. Thanks a lot. See you next week.